Now that you're starting to understand the process of how digitizing actually works and what goes through your head, let's look at how to get you access to the tools that you'll need to actually digitize and create stitches. In Design Shop, we have the input toolbar. And the input toolbar is uh, over on the left on my screen right now. So it's right here. And uh, those tools are going to be what we use uh, to digitize with. The first one is uh, just uh, the edit mode. That's going to be mostly for selecting. The next one over, that's going to be your walk or, or kind of linear elements. Um, anytime you see one of these icons with a little black triangle in the corner, that means that it has more tools available to you in the uh, flyout underneath. So if you left click and hold for a half a second, the flyout will become uh, up, it will pop up, and then you can come over and select your next one. And if you don't know what one of these tools is, again, hover over it, the tooltip will pop up. So we've got our walk normal. So this would be used for um, walk stitches or bean stitches, which is uh, kind of like a walk stitch that goes over itself multiple times. The next one over is a uh, vector line. So it's just a linear element that's completely a graphic, um, but you, you can create a vector line. That is a level dependent feature. And then the next one over is uh, a manual stitch. And so manual stitches, um, every time you click, it will drop a needle and it will only drop a needle when you click. So you are, are manually digitizing every single needle penetration. Um, not something you use overly often, but every now and then it can be a handy, handy little tool. Whenever you let go, the last selected tool will pop up in that region. So um, I had uh, walk selected. I just moved over and selected manual. So now it's on manual. If I want to go back to walk, I can click and hold for half a second, come back over and select my walk again. Now, uh, whenever you have a tool selected, just like whenever you have an element selected, the most uh, common properties for it will pop up on the property bar up here. All right, the next one down um, is kind of your column one. And if I click and hold for a second, you have access to your column two. Those are going to be um, typically for your satin stitches that you're gonna be creating. Um, I, I tend to use them when I'm digitizing lettering um, or again, any of those slightly more curvilinear or rectilinear uh, elements that are thinner um, and, and more directional. The next one over is my single line and, and I have three options under here. Um, single line center, single line left and single line right. Um, now, unless I'm really, really thinking about it, um, I typically grab the wrong one, and that's okay because you can change it later after you've digitized the line. But what a single line does is it um, allows you to create just one line and specify the width of that, and it will be that same width all the way throughout. But instead of just being a single line of stitching um, with just one right after the other, it creates like a row of satin stitches, or depending on the width, you can make it a fill but it's multiple stitch lines going throughout a form, but it's the same width all the way throughout the form. Um, and so you can change that. You can specify, I want it to be 20 point wide. I want it to be 40 points wide. Um, so digitize one line and then you're able to, to move on with that and have it be the same width all the way throughout the form. The next one down is going to be your fills. So if I click and hold, we've got a lot of options for this. Um, some of these are level dependent, but the first one's gonna be your traditional. Um, so this is going to be a, a larger area. It can contain holes, um, but typically you're only gonna have one stitch direction, at least when you're inputting it. Um, if you want, you can go back in and edit back in a lot of stuff later. The next one over is um, a complex fill, but it's manual mode, so it just creates just the shape and then you would edit in the stitches later. Next one over is unifill. That allows you to, uh, it, it walks you through with uh, inputting a hole, inputting splice lines. So you can have um, 
subregions and you can have multiple and even opposing stitch directions as long as you have those subregions in with um, your splice lines. Next one over is uh, applique. So with applique, what it does is it creates in one element um, all three portions or can create all three portions of an applique design um, being the locator stitch, the tack down stitch, and the cover stitch. What's nice about that is um, if you move one, it moves all three. Uh, so it, it requires a little less editing than when you do it manually. You can also assign a background color to it to mimic whatever color of fabric you are placing down when you place down that applique. And then on the far, far right um, is the vector fill. And so this just creates shapes. It can contain a hole. You don't have to edit it in later. Um, but it is purely a vector shape and has no stitches associated with it, you can go back in and edit those in later. All right, so I'm going to leave that on the complex fill because um, that's typically the one that I, I use most often out of those. Um, but that's what I do. Uh, you as um, digitizers may decide that you far prefer the unifill and so you may choose to have that up as kind of your default. I use different tools than you will. Um, you will find what works best for you and that's completely fine. Uh, do what is easiest and comfortable for you. All right, uh, the next one over is lettering input. This just uses uh, the, the keyboard lettering. Below that, we have uh, insert trim. So that would, I clicked on it, so it inserted a trim, let me delete that. Um, yeah, you uh, click on it to insert a trim. Uh, or you can insert a return to origin or a sequin eject command. Um, typically, I'm going to just have that as uh, insert trim. My return to origin I've set as a property um, in Design Shop so that it just automatically does it at the end of the design, which just means the machine will return to the center, um, or typically center, it will return to the origin of the design. And then um, the next one over is cross stitch, which is kind of a specialty stitch. You can you can create essentially cross stitch patterns uh, in here that will um, sew very very quickly, um, but it it mimics kind of the hand uh, cross stitch look. Below that, down here we have our editing tools, so I can edit in holes or spl uh, splits, um, fill islands. Uh, here we've got splices so we can create sub regions in fills. Here we have entry and exit points so we can change where those are. Um, if we have multiple elements selected, we can even resequence them. And then uh, here we have our stitch direction editing tools. This, this is probably of the editing tools, the one that I use the most frequently, um, just because I'm always trying to tweak my stitch directions to um, fan more uh, efficiently and uh, with fewer ripples and bunching, so I'm always looking at my stitch directions trying to, to better my sew quality with them. And then below that we have a lot of our uh, selection tools which we've talked about in, in another session. So um, things to think about with your uh, digitizing tools. Um, you've got multiple tools available to you under those flaps. So if you see a tool with that little green arrow, you know that you can click and hold for half a second and access more tools. Um, they're grouped. Uh, with similar elements. So the walk tool is grouped with very thin linear elements. Um, the, the single line column has the multiple versions of it. Uh, column one and column two are grouped together. All the fills are grouped together. So you've got that kind of ready for you. If you just know what style of something you want, you can go click on it and grab the specific. Um, so that's super helpful. Other things to keep in mind, if you get trapped inside of a digitizing tool, um, so you're digitizing along, well, I'll just show you. Um, so if I were to select a digitizing tool, um, so I click on it, uh, this little windmill that appears in the, the center of my screen right now is showing the previous stitch of the last, or the last stitch of the previous element. Um, since there are no elements previously, it is actually showing me, showing me design origin at the moment. But if I click, I'm going to begin digitizing. If I left click, I create a straight point. If I right click, I create a curve point. Um, if I touch the edge of the screen, it will begin to auto scroll for me. If it just goes kind of crazy on you, um, you can hit escape and it will remove those points. If I hit escape twice, it will remove the points and then deselect the tool. 
Also, as you are digitizing, if you have one point that you don't like, you can hit backspace to delete it, and you can continue hitting backspace on your keyboard to remove those points. So anything that you don't like, you can backspace out of. Um, <clears throat> if I'm digitizing and I uh, click and drag, I can create handles as I do that. Um, so you can uh, modify those handles as you go. And then uh, to, to complete a shape, I'll hit enter. And that will complete the shape. Uh, if I'm digitizing and I want to close the shape that I'm working on, I want to have the last point meet back up perfectly with the first point, um, I can hold uh, control and hit enter. I'm sorry, shift and hit enter. Try that again. Uh, shift and hit enter and that will close that shape back up. Um, control enter uh, causes columns, so if I'm using a column one or a column two, to exit on the opposite side of where I end. Um, so I know we haven't talked about uh, this quite yet, um, but if I use a, a column one and I start on this side, typically I'm going to exit where my last point is. So there's that last point. Now if I hold, sorry, one side then the other. If I hold control when I uh, hit enter, it will exit on the opposite point. Um, since I did this one with a walk, uh, control didn't really do anything. All right, uh, so you've got kind of the basics um, of how to use these. Uh, Alt will also constrain a line angle it's another uh, keyboard uh, shortcut for you. So if I hold Alt, notice that my line is snapping to 15 degree increments. Um, you can change that degree um, in your uh, preferences, uh, but you have that available to you. So now that you've got a basic uh, understanding of where all these tools are and kind of how to access them and how to use them, uh, we can get you really going and then you can take a look at the other um, videos specifically for whatever tool you want to use. So um, if you want to walk, go get that one. If you want a column, go get that one and we'll talk about the spe uh, specific uses for each tool. But you've got the basics under your belt, so go in there and start playing with them.